Okay, in this video we're going to work towards looking for a solution series for a differential equation known as a Frobenius series. And so what we're going to look at just now is this fairly big theorem um, which will eventually result in us being able to find such a series solution. And so in this theorem we have the following. So we set L Y, so L is like our differential operator. So we'll set that equal to alpha naught plus alpha one x plus alpha two x squared, so we have your quadratic polynomial, times another x squared y double prime, plus another quadratic polynomial with beta um, not 1 and 2 as coefficients, times x times y prime, and then finally another quadratic polynomial, gamma not gamma 1 and gamma 2, um, where y is the coefficient. So that's our differential operator. And then we uh, need some more notation. So if we set pi equal to the following polynomial, so it's alpha i, um, r times r minus 1, beta i times r plus gamma i, and that's for i between 0, 1, and 2, so it's built out of these coefficients. And we define a n, so these are numbers by the following. So a1 is 1, and sorry, a0 is 1, a1 is P1 of R divided by P0 of R plus 1, and it's negative. And AN is defined in terms of the previous uh, two terms as follows. So if we have this entire setup, then the following is true. If we define a series as the sum of a n, x to the n plus r, so notice we have it offset by this um, factor of r. It's not just a normal power series. So we have this differential operator acting on y will give us the polynomial p naught evaluated at r times x to the r. So again, this is going to help us find Frobenius series solutions to differential equations. Okay, so now we're ready to look at the proof. So the first thing to notice is the following. We can rearrange the terms of the differential operator as follows. So we can write it as x squared times the quantity alpha 2x squared y double prime plus beta 2x y prime plus gamma 2y that and then plus x alpha 1 x squared y double prime plus beta 1 x y prime plus gamma 1 y and then finally plus alpha naught x squared y double prime plus beta naught x y prime plus gamma naught y. So we just rearranged the terms that make up this differential operator but now we can set this equal to x squared times L2 of y plus x times L1 of y um, plus L0 of y, where we've defined these component operators as follows. So Li of y is defined by alpha i x squared y double prime plus beta i x y prime plus gamma i y. Good, and that gives us some really good motivation for looking at what these operators L i do to the power series. So that's what we'll do. We'll set y equal to this power series. Well, it's not quite a power series. It's the sum n equals 0 to infinity, some coefficient a n, and then x to the n plus r. So right now we're kind of thinking as r of r as a variable, and our next step will be to see what l i y is. Okay, good. I'll clean up the board and then we'll get to it. Okay, so let's recall what we ended up with. We had our goal of describing what this differential operator Li, which was alpha i x squared y double prime plus beta i x y prime plus gamma i y was and what it did to this series, y equals the sum of a n x to the n plus r. And so notice, if y is this series, then we can take y prime and that will be the sum n equals zero to infinity of n plus r a n x to the n plus r minus 1. And I want to point that out. Since we've offset by this by r, we no longer know that the first term is a constant, so we still have to include the n equals 0 term.
Great. And then likewise, we can say y double prime equals the sum n equals 0 to infinity of n plus r times n plus r minus 1 times a n times x to the n plus r minus 2. Okay, good. So notice, as we multiply x squared into y double prime, that will boost the power of x up to x to the n plus r. And when we uh, multiply this power of x to the first power into y prime, the same thing that will happen. And that will give us the following. So we'll have the sum n equals 0 to infinity of alpha i times n plus r n plus r minus 1 times a n x to the n plus r. So that is this first term. Good. And then the second term will be given by the sum n equals 0 to infinity of beta i. And then we have n plus r a n x to the n plus r. Okay, great. That's this second term. And then finally, we have the sum n equals 0 to infinity of gamma i a n x to the n plus r. And just recall that this uh, exponent got, got raised back up from x to the n plus r minus 2 by multiplying by x squared and similarly for the first derivative. But the great thing about this setup is we don't have to do any re-indexing as the powers of x match in all of the terms. So that means we can put all of this together and get the following. So this is the sum n equals 0 to infinity of alpha i n plus r n plus r minus 1 plus beta i n plus r plus gamma i, and then all of that is multiplied by a n x to the n plus r. But if you recall on the first board, we had a name exactly for this kind of uh, um, combination, and that was the polynomial pi. And notice this is the polynomial pi evaluated at n plus r. So in fact, what we have here is the sum n equals 0 to infinity of the polynomial pi evaluated at n plus r, a n x to the n plus r. Good. So we've made some good work. We've simplified down what L i um, evaluated on the series defined y over there, um, and we found out that it gives us this. So I'll clean up the board and then we'll look at the next step. Okay, so let's recall where we left off. So we had this operator li on y gave us the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of this polynomial pi, which we defined before, of n plus r a sub n x to the n plus r. And then we broke up this operator l y, or sorry, this operator L acting on Y, I should say, as X squared, L2 acting on Y, plus X, L1 acting on Y, and then L not acting on Y. Okay, great. So that gives us kind of an obvious place to go. So that means we can write L Y as the following. So we'll write it as X squared times L2 of y, which we'll use this formula, which we just derived before, and that will give us the following. So we'll have the sum n equals 0 to infinity of P2 n plus r a n x to the n plus r plus 2. Good. Now we need x times L1 of y, and so that will give us the sum n equals 0 to infinity of p1 n plus r a n x to the n plus r plus 1. Again, we're raising this by 2 because we're multiplying by x squared. We're raising that by 1 because we're multiplying by x in this uh, expansion of the operator L. And then finally plus the sum n equals 0 to infinity of p0 n plus r and then x to the n plus r. Okay, good. <clears throat> now the next thing to notice is that the lowest term here is r plus 2, 
x to the r plus 2. The lowest term here is x to the r plus 1, and the lowest term here is x to the r. So that means in the last two terms we need to pull something out so that they all start at the same place. And we can do that as follows. So we'll pull out the n equals 0 term. Good, and the n equals 0 term um, will be p1 of r times a0 times x to the r plus 1. Good, and then from there we'll write the sum n equals 1 to infinity of p1 n plus r a n x to the n plus r plus 1. And now this sum starts at x to the r plus 2 just like this one. Okay, good. Now the next thing we need to do is pull two things out of this last sum. So we will pull out the n equals 0 term and the n equals 1 term. Okay, so if we plug out the, pull out the n equals 0 term, we'll be left with p0 of r, x to the r, good, and then that's times a0, so um, I'll put my a0 in there, good, and then we'll have uh, p1 of r plus 1, a1, x to the r plus 1. Great, and now we can add on the sum n equals 2 to infinity of p0, um, x, sorry, n plus r, um, a sub n, x to the n plus r, and I just realized I left my a sub n out of that term right there. Okay, good, now we have some re-indexing to do. So the re-indexing we need to do is as follows. We want to index this so it starts at zero. So that means what we'll do is we'll replace n with n plus one. So n will become um, n plus one. And so that'll move this up to n plus r plus two. That'll move this to n plus one. And that'll move this in here to n plus r plus one. And then that'll change this to starting at n equals zero. Okay, good. And then down here we want to re-index sending n to n plus two. Again, that's going to change this to starting at n equals 0 to infinity. And then here, we're going to have n plus r plus 2. This will be uh, a sub n plus 2. And here we'll have n plus r plus 2. Okay, great. So, I'll clean up the board, and then I'll also um, put all this re-indexing into effect. Okay, in the previous step we left off having re-indexed everything into the right form, so I've combined all of those terms into the following sum, and recall that we had to pull some things out of the first two sums. So, in the first sum we had to pull two terms out, in the second sum we had to pull one term out, and let's see what all we have left. So here we have p naught evaluated at r, a naught x to the r, plus the quantity p1 r a0 plus p0 r plus 1 a1 and then x to the r plus 1 and then finally this big sum which has combinations of a n with p2, a n plus 1 with p1, and finally a n plus 2 with p0. Okay. Good. So now uh, notice that we had some assumptions at the beginning of the theorem involving uh, the recursion um, on these a's as well as a0 and a1. And so notice that uh, um, we had the following. We had a0 equal to 1. Good. And then um, that... Uh, and we also had a1 equals negative um, p1 of r over p0 of r plus 1. Good. But notice, if a0 is 1 and a1 is this, that's going to take the second term and cancel it out to 0. So remember, that was an assumption. Now, 
in truth, um, the goal is for this whole series to um, give us zero in the end. And so if we want this term to be zero, then that's going to um, require us to uh, make this assumption on the recursion of the coefficients. And then remember, a, a, a zero is going to be some sort of free variable because we have a homogeneous equation. Great. And then we also, also, we had the following. We had a n plus 2, and I'm going to um, re-index the recursion that was given in the statement of the theorem, but it's equivalent. Um, we had a n plus 2 is equal to negative, and then p1 of n plus r plus 1, um, a n plus 1, plus p2 of n plus r, a n all over p naught of n plus r plus 2. Good. And so that's just a re-indexing of one of the assumptions from the theorem. But notice that uh, that re-indexing, if we plug that into this term, all of this is going to cancel because that's exactly what you would get if you were to solve this coefficient equals 0 for a n plus 2. And so in the end, we have this entire um, differential operator acting on this series boils down to just this first term. And so here we're kind of assuming that r is a variable, and so there are obviously values of r when you can't divide by p naught. but if it's a, um, a variable and we haven't evaluated it anyway, anywhere, that's okay. So this whole series... Uh, um, simplifies down to this one term, and that's going to be useful as we move on to study Frobenius solutions for differential equations. And that's the end of this uh, video.